Hello everyone, and welcome to day two of the iTwin Developer Conference. For those of you who joined us yesterday, welcome back. If you weren't able to join us yesterday, my name is Jason Slocum, and I'm a director of product management for Bentley's iTwin platform. I'll be serving as your moderator for today's sessions. We had some pretty exciting sessions yesterday, and I'd encourage you to go back and watch them. They're available on demand, and you can access them by going to the same registration page where you registered for this session and clicking on the Day 1, Session 1, and Day 1, Session 2 options. Before we get started today, I'd like to provide a quick reminder on how to use the ON24 platform. The sessions will all automatically display in the large window at the middle of your screen, and you can click to make them full screen if desired. We'll be taking questions during the sessions, and we'll then have the presenters address your questions after their presentations. Please feel free to post your questions throughout the sessions using the questions options in the menu at the left of the screen. All right, with that out of the way, let's jump right into today's first session. In this session, I'm going to be joined by Josh Shifter, Senior Manager of Software Development for the iTwin platform, and Sheena Gaines, Director of Partner Relations, to provide you with an introduction to building on the iTwin platform. The iTwin platform is a pass offering which is intended to help you accelerate your digital twin applications and bring them to market faster. If we were all sitting in a conference room together instead of doing this virtually, this is the part of the presentation where I'd ask all of you if you know, what is the first digital twin? Well, since we are all together in person, how about I provide you with a clue instead? Hey, uh, here, here, we had a problem here. Just say again, please. Uh -huh. Uh, here's the way I'm assuming most of you may be familiar with this scene, but in case you aren't, this is audio from the Apollo 13 U.S. space mission back in 1970. The Apollo 13 mission was planned as a lunar landing mission, but was aborted after an explosion of the number two oxygen tank. Apollo 13 was approximately 200,000 miles away from the Earth when they heard an explosion and their cabin was filled with alarms and warning lights. What followed was a harrowing several days as the three-person crew struggled to survive, including making several pivotal navigational corrections and endeavoring to preserve wa oxygen, water, and electricity. Behind the scenes at NASA, they had 15 simulators that were used to train astronauts and mission controllers in every aspect of the mission, including multiple failure scenarios. In the audio transcripts of the Apollo 13 flight controller loops, most of the immediate discussion is about maintaining data connections with the spacecraft, such as executing roll maneuvers to better align the main antenna array. They knew that it was critical to get up-to-date information so they could update their digital twins to properly reflect the real-world conditions of the post-explosion Apollo 13. With this data available, NASA mission controllers were able to quickly adapt and modify their simulations to match conditions of the real-life crippled spacecraft so they could research, reject, and perfect the strategies required to bring the astronauts home. Note, this reflects reflects a couple of very common problems with modern digital twins, including the importance of keeping that digital twin up to date and the need to not only acquire real-time data, but to be able to convert that data into a form that can be easily used to make real-time decisions. After the explosion, several carefully calculated burns had to be made in order to course correct and allow Apollo 13 to return to Earth before their oxygen, water, and electricity ran out. Mission Control immediately dispatched their backup crew to practice maneuvers on simulators that were being modified to reflect the spacecraft conditions. This involved reprogramming the mainframes with information about the new spacecraft's mass, center of gravity, and engine thrust. Working together with the lunar module manufacturer, Northrop Grumman, the simulation team quickly worked out a new procedure in which the ship could be stabilized using the autopilot and deploy the landing gear to get it out of the way of the descent engine. It worked, and the crew was successfully able to perform the free return burn. I don't think it's a spoiler at this point to say that the crew did safely return to Earth, and this has gone down as one of the legendary stories of NASA. So what can we learn from the use of the digital twin that the Apollo 13 mission control team used to rescue their spacecraft? I suggest there are a few key items which are as important to building infrastructure digital twins today as they were for NASA 50 years ago. The first is the need to keep that digital twin up to date and reflecting real world conditions. What good is it to be collaborating with or making decisions based on out-of-date information? The second 
is the need for an open and federated data environment. The Apollo 13 digital twin combined information from many systems and vendors that had to be intertwined in order to reflect the actual physical spacecraft. The third is the need for analytics and feedback at every step. Being able to make modifications to the digital twin and run what-if simulations was critical in allowing mission control to determine both what would work and equally important, what would cause more harm. The last is the need for insights. When a new flight path had to be calculated to slingshot the spacecraft around the moon, it was a risky endeavor. If they went too low, it could burn up. Too high, and they'd skip right out into space. The development team ran analysis for many hours and tried many scenarios in order to find an optimal solution. Looking at the infrastructure of digital twin landscape today, we can easily apply all of these keys. DAC comes from many places and vendors. It needs to be kept up to date, and it needs to support an open and federated approach. In order to realize value from the digital twin, you need to be able to immersively visualize, uh, surface analytics, and deliver insights. Fortunately, technology has evolved quite a bit in the past 50 years. Unlike when Apollo 13 was launched in 1970, we can now put that digital twin online where it's accessible to a wide variety of practitioners, and we can deliver specialized software to be able to engage with them where they live, both literally and figuratively. We can also leverage sensors to help deliver real-time data, drones and reality models to help capture real-world conditions, and apply AI and machine learning algorithms to drive advanced insights and predictive analytics. To show you how the iTwin platform accomplishes these objectives, I'm going to go ahead and break out the digital blackboard and take you all through a short course I like to call iTwin Platform 101 to help you understand some of these key components. Let's get started with an I model. An I model is a common container for infrastructure information, which is built on a SQLite relational database format. You can create an I model for one or more engineering design applications by using a connector to translate that data into a common I model schema. The I model hub is our mission controller, if you'll pardon the pun, that is responsible for coordinating concurrent access to I models as well as changes made to them in the form of change dates. These change sets provide you with an immutable ledger of all the changes to an I model. Similar to an accounting system for financial data, the ledger can provide a reliable record of what happened when and by whom. Since the ledger is reliable, immutable, and append only, you can't change that history. It forms a timeline that can be referenced externally as an authoritative record of the state of the I model at any given point in time. In this manner, iModel Hub provides the means to sign the timeline rather than create external and, and potentially forgeable snapshots for archival or reference. Like a Git repository for source code, in the iModel ecosystem, copies of iModels are distributed widely in briefcases. In fact, iModel Hub's primary purpose is not to hold or process copies of iModels. Rather, iModel Hub's main role is to main the sequence of chain sets that forms an iModels timeline. iModel accepts chain sets from iModel.js backends through a process called push and then sends them to other validated users when requested through a process called pull. IMAL just JS applications determine when and how to push and pull these changes. Briefcases are local copies of an IMAL that contains data from change sets along with local changes. Users can make changes to their copy of an IMAL and then push them as a single change set file into IMAL Hub. Likewise, changes can be pulled from IMAL Hub to update a briefcase. The iTwin Synchronizer is the glue that allows you to create a common connection from your engineering data files to the iModel Hub. It is available as both a desktop or cloud app and allows you to create automated jobs to create an iModel and process change sets to keep your iModels up to date. iModel connectors enable a wide range of both Bentley and third-party applications to contribute to an iTwin. The connectors are used by the Synchronizer to translate the native file formats into the iModel schema. The presentation from Future on yesterday provides some good details of how to build a connector. I also want to highlight Snapshots and the recently released iTwin Snapshot app. Snapshots are static iMiles. They contain all the intelligence of an iMile, but they don't work with the iMile hub and you can't leverage chain sets with them. They can be useful though when you're getting started and exploring our examples. Now let's look at an iTwin. Nitwin supports the federation of many types of data, including both engineering design files via iModels, reality data, maps, photos, IoT, asset performance data, and much more. The iTwin Hub provides you a web portal where you can go in and view and manage all these iTwin connections. One final piece I want to highlight is the ability to create front-end extensions in order to expand on the functionality of the UI. You saw a little bit of this yesterday in the presentation from Hatch. 
We'll see another good example of an extension in the safety basis presentation that's going to happen later this afternoon. Putting it all together, this is kind of what it looks like. It starts with creating the engineering design data, using the iTwin synchronizer to convert it into an iModel and write it into the iModel hub. From there, an iTwin can be created which federates data from multiple sources such as IoT, reality data service, mapping service, etc. The iTwin can then be viewed using the iTwin viewer. Of course, viewing the iTwin is just a small piece of that puzzle. Being able to leverage the iTwin throughout the asset lifecycle for workflows such as improving coordination, running simulations, and improving operations are where Digital Twin really starts to pay dividends throughout that entire lifecycle of the asset. Bentley has long been known for providing world-class solutions for enterprises and professionals to design, build, and operate the world's infrastructure. The mission of the iTwin platform is to take this expertise and provide the digital twin platform ecosystem with enabling technologies for infrastructure digital twin solutions. Whether the digital twin is being used for design and engineering, construction, operations, the iTwin platform includes all the tools and critical infrastructure needed to achieve the key objectives that we learned from that Apollo 13 example. With that said, I'm excited to formally introduce the iTwin Developer Portal, which is available right now at developer.bentley.com. The iTwin Portal is intended to provide you with the APIs and SDKs needed to not only build and manage an infrastructure digital twin application, but also to interact with it throughout each stage of that asset's lifecycle. Please note that many of these API products are still in tech preview and we're actively working to enhance these offerings as we speak. If you have any questions or suggestions regarding these APIs or would like help in adopting them, please do reach out to me. My email should be under the presenter section and I'd love to get your feedback. All right, I think that covers everything I wanted to share with you today. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over to Josh Shifter, who's gonna tell you all about i2NJS. Thanks. Hi. My name is Josh Shifter. I'm a development manager at Bentley, and I'm here to talk to you about some resources that are available to you to work with iModelJS. Now, the more important I want to say at the beginning here is that everything I'm about to show you is completely is available publicly. It's all free to, to use, and it is available immediately. You can start on this today, and you can use these same tools that I'm using. Okay, so starting point for everything, uh, everything in our open source community is itwinjs.org. That's the new address. The old one was imodeljs.org, but it's m mainly the same content. So you start here at itwinjs.org and it has everything you need to, to get going. So first thing I see when I see a, a site like this is I just go straight to the getting started, right? So this is where your quick instructions are. We call this the offline quick start, right? Um, I, I start there. Uh, this instructions are very simple. You got some prereqs to install, node and git. You've got to, um, to clone the repository and then install and start. So let's, let's go take a look at what that looks like. All right. So I've got the repository cloned here. Uh, this is the readme. This is what it looks like. It's a little, little screenshot of it. And then again, just a reminder of those simple instructions, install and start. I've already installed it. That takes a couple moments, but I'm just going to type npm start here. Now this takes a little bit of time while, while we're initialized, while the app is being initialized. And what this is doing is it's running a desktop application, uh, on on your local machine there is no server component for this there is no sign in necessary this is simply running a itwin viewer on your desktop so we're just going to wait for a moment for that to finish okay looks like it's almost ready All right. when the app comes up it looks like this i can close the console and here's the application it's a very simple iTwin viewer. It has a few features, rotate, pan, that kind of thing. Uh, there's walk tool, measure tool. You can measure, I can measure the length of something here. All right, just to show that I can do it. So, okay. So that's the, that's the desktop starter tool. Um, 
it's the simplest tool we have. It is it is capable of running like I'm doing now in offline mode, okay, where I've just opened a local file, or in online mode where I would have to sign in and we would we would interact with the iModel Hub to get the uh, to get a briefcase. But I'll get into that in a couple of minutes. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is all right. So you've you've opened this thing. And you're looking at, at your local, you know, this is a, a canned eye model that we give you. But let's go back to itwinjs.org and see what to do next. So down here it says, uh, follow the tutorials for to dive deeper, right? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a, sh a snapshot eye model, but I'm going to come here just to show you where it is. So creating test eye model, right? So it's not much fun playing around with our pre-canned samples all the time. So come here. Um, I want to make a local, an offline I model seed with, seeded with data from my local computer. So I'll click on this one and here are the instructions. And what the instructions are telling me is to download uh, an app called iTwin Snapshot. Okay. So I have that app here already. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to run it. So it looks like this, the iTwin snapshot app. It has, you know, it's guiding you very quickly to first step, create a snapshot. That's what its job is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a snapshot of this uh, sample data set I have around. It's a, it's a, it's a wind farm. It has some uh, wind turbines in it. I'm gonna tell it where I want to put that. So I want to put that in my uh, documents under wind farm, which I have created. And I'm going to select that folder and then I'm going to add the file that I put there. It's called turbines.dgn. Now, uh, this program can handle, you know, large and small projects. This is a pretty small one. Uh, it's one DGN file that has a bunch of uh, wind turbine models in it. And then I'm just going to hit create. Okay. So right now the, what we're doing is it, it's, the program is analyzing the DGN file and determining what work needs to be done. And boom, well, actually, I was faster than I expected it to be. Okay, so now I have a local iModel. Well, what do I do with it? The simplest thing I can do is I can view it. Now, when you get this snapshot viewer, it comes bundled with a desktop starter. So I didn't even have to have built it myself like I showed you a moment ago. But here's that. Here's the iModel I just created. Uh, there's the one wind turbine. There's actually, there are actually 10 of them in here. And it's just, it's just a simple model. And, and, and that's what it looks like. Okay. So, uh, I've got this, you know, this is that same program. This is a different instance of it because this is the one that, that ran. Oops. I meant to do this. And just to show you that it has that same online offline. So I can open, I could open a different offline snapshot. For example, I could pick here. I had it open before just a moment ago. That that uh, Baytown little process plant there. Here it is. You know, here it is in this other instance, and I can go back to my, uh, you know, or I can just go back and look at my wind farm again, which is over here under uh, wind farm. All right. So there it is again. Okay. So what's next? So now I've got my. I know how to make a snapshot eye model. Well, now I want to try to make an eye model. Now there's a lot, lot you can do, sorry, with a snapshot eye model before I move on, right? You can do, um, you can do basically anything you can do with an online model, um, except, you know, it's a little more difficult to share it with somebody else, right? You have to send them, you know, send them a file like, like we used to do, right? Email it to them or whatever, and they can open it up in their own, uh, you know, in their, in their, in their own desktop viewer. But, you know, the next, the next, uh, horizon here is to, is to put an iModel onto the iModel hub and share it that way. So let's go back to our tutorial, right? And you remember there was, uh, this one. So this is creating a test iModel seeded with data from a set of files. So I can come over here. And what this is telling me to do is step one is before I can create it, I have to make a project. So for that, I come here, right? Go to the registration dashboard. I'm going to create a new I model. So I come here. I'm going to say new I model. 
and I'm going to say I'm going to say iTwin synchronizer. So the iTwin synchronizer option is the one where when I have a bunch of DGN files and I want to update them and also I can then synchronize them again. So let's use that WinFarm demo. Actually, let's let's not call it WinFarm demo because I used that one before when I was setting this up. Let's just call it WinFarm. Okay, so this is going to take a moment where, remember, we're creating a project online. Okay, here is my project. I can view it, but it's empty right now. So I need to run that synchronizer. And remember, I, I show, I, uh, well, let's go back to the tutorial. All right, so here we are back at the tutorial where we're um, uploading a, a file. We're going to use the iTwin synchronizer. Uh, the way to get the iTwin synchronizer is here. Uh, it has a nice website to uh, from which you can download it. Okay, so of course I already have the the program downloaded, so I'm just going to to run it locally here. Now this thing is going to probably ask me to sign in because, right? Unlike the uh, snapshot creator program, this one's going to. Um, This one, this one's going to put data up in the cloud, so it needs to know who I am. Here we are back at the application, and it's time. I'm going to, I'm going to choose my wind farm project, right, which I just created, and then I'm going to, I'm going to make a new connection. Now, this connection is sort of like a job, and it's remembering what, what so that I can do this, so that I can run this multiple times to refresh this I model as my. Uh, yeah, as my source data changes. So I'm just going to say the connection, it doesn't matter what it's called. And WinFarm is the name of the iModel that I created a moment ago. And then I'm just going to browse to where my um, my files were. You remember it was under WinFarm. Here it is. So I'll select the folder. And then I'm going to add the file and say, this is the file that I want to add into my iModel. So it's called Turbines DGN. We've seen this before. And I just say next. Now what's going on now is first it's verifying that it has all the necessary connectors in order to to translate the translate the data that I gave it. I gave it a DGN file so it needs the DGN connector. Okay, I've got it and now my job is ready to go and I can just press the uh, synchronize button. Okay? Now I can do that multiple times, but oh, here we are here. So there's a synchronize what do I, I, I like to create a name version because name versions make them easier to view. I have to give it a name. Let's call it version one. This is sort of like when you're dealing with GitHub, right? You give it, give the, give a, a comment, a version. I'm going to press synchronize. So this is going to take a little while while it's going. I'm just going to describe the synchronizer. Remember you can, um, you can run this things multiple times. I, once I've created this job, I can run it again and again. I can update the I model, run it again. I, I can update the DGN file, sorry. I can make changes to it, say in MicroStation, and run it again and again. And each time I'll get a new change set in the I model. Right? And once this thing is ready, then we'll be able to view it, view that I model um, online. Okay, so now that it's synchronized, I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to go to the iModel. This is going to open up the iModel in the uh, the online design review application. Here it is. Starting up. So you see it's the iModel with the turbine models in it and here. So the big difference you see, so you see the same turbines that we saw before. The big difference now is this app's just a little different. This app by default turns on the um, the, the map background so we can see the uh, where the turbines sit in uh, in context with the with the real world. Okay, so that shows so now what we've done so far is we've created snapshots. And we've created online I models, and I've shown you how to view them both. Okay. And next, let's let's look at some more tools we have available to ourselves. Um, again, available to everybody, completely free. Uh, let's look at one called the I Model Console. 
imodelconsole.bentley.com. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to navigate it to imodelconsole.bentley.com. Uh, I've already seen the tutorial. I know how to use this tool. I'm going to find my project that we just created, Wind Farm. Okay, this that's the name of the project. This is the name of the iModel, Wind Farm. This is that version one uh, name version that we just created a few moments ago. I'm going to open it up. And this what this tool does is it lets us do uh, queries of our iModel, sort of non-graphical queries. So in this case, uh, I'm just going to do some quick things so we can look at them. So for example, select star from, and this is, this is ECSQL, which is a variant of SQL or SQL. And the syntax is very similar to SQL, but instead of from the name of the table, we're going to do from the name of the schema. It's the bizcore schema, biz dot, and then the name of the class. So select star from biz dot element. I hit enter there. You see there are 200 elements in this, in this I model. Uh, we, we know there are 10, um, there are 10 turbines in here, but I guess it's a little confusing, right? There's, why are there 200 elements, right? Um, some of those elements are parts of the turbine. Some of them are supporting elements. So I want to learn more about this. That brings us to the next tool, the Schema Explorer. So I clicked on this uh, little gear icon and I click Schema Explorer. What that's going to do is it's going to open up the next tool, the Schema Explorer, and it's going to, um, Oh, the Schema Explorer is going to open up the very same I model that I already had open in the console. And now we can use the Schema Explorer to explore what's going on at, at a metadata level, right? So what do I got here? The, the, this is a list of all of the schemas that are in this I model. And this is a list of all of the classes. And the really interesting one, of course, is Turbine, right? And so this is the name of the schema and this is the name of the class, right? Schema is called custom item types wind energy and the class is called turbine. So I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard and come over here back to the console and I'm going to do select star from that, uh, that schema and class. And now we'll see, oh, look. So there are 10 of them here. So that's what I expected. There are 10 wind turbines in this I model, and there are 10 that come back in the query, and here's all their, you know, all the different properties that they have. Okay, so that is, so now I've shown you snapshot creation, I model creation, console, and the browser. Next thing is, okay, so where to go next? So where to go next, we'll always go back to itwinjs.org when you're not sure. Um, I'm going to show you the, the, what we call the sample gallery or the sample showcase, which has a bunch of samples that teach you different ways of how to, um, that different kinds of code you can write to explore different I models. The sample showcase is, um, is here. Um, on the right, we have all the different samples. This first sample is a very simple one. It doesn't do anything special. It just kind of get you oriented and it shows you that you can, uh, you can basically view a bunch of different, um, different eye models. Let's look at that process plant that we started out with, um, at the beginning of when I started talking, right? Um, that'll come up here in a moment. So here's that Baytown process plant in the showcase. Uh, over here, you see there's a kind of an explanation of this sample. And over here, you see the source code to, the, to create this sample. You see it basically is just a very simple thing that has a, uh, this little control plane defined in it and then this viewport. But there's some, some pretty interesting stuff in here. We can show, uh, reality data in here. So here's an I model. Um, this is actually the Exton campus where I, I used to work before um, I got stuck at home for a few months here. And for example, th this, this, uh, 
this quick, it, this shows you how to load it, this quick sample, and it also shows you this little kind of neat feature of being able to adjust the transparency of that, you know, background reality data. And again, the code for how to do it is here. Um, the interesting function, I think, is this, uh, you know, set reality data transparency. You can see how easy it is. It's just basically two lines of code to do that. Okay, let, let me just show you one or two other interesting samples um, over here. Um, here, the, the cross probing sample is pretty neat. Um, this one shows you how you can uh, click on an element in 3D and the the other view of the of the drawing will update or you can click on an element in the drawing and the equivalent element in the 3d model will update so that, that's a pretty neat one and again the source code is here for how to do it you know this one has a little bit more code to it uh, and this one has a really neat uh ec sql um query in it that you can read about here and learn. And if you if you were at our Jumpstart event, or I should say if you weren't at our Jumpstart event, uh, my colleague Rup Sani did a great explanation and we have that online recorded if you want. He explains this query. Uh, there's, as you can see, I, I think there's about 40 or 50 uh, different um, examples, different things that can be done. Uh, for so, A lot of them are these uh, UI samples that show you how to create different kinds of buttons, for example, um, different kinds of uh, inputs, check boxes, radio buttons, all the kind of stuff. And so what I want to show you last is these, these are geometric samples. These let you do geometric operations, like for example, uh, translate left and right, right? Basic stuff, you got to start basic. Uh, you can do shows you how to create different kinds of geometry 2d 3d right and uh, again the code is all here in uh, in here that shows you how to do it oh, i should have come here right this shows you how to create a box and a cone right cone dot create from access points right exactly what you'd expect but it teaches you how to do it and you can edit this code you know change it around and, and just click the run button. Um, this shows you how to do the, uh, uh, this this one doesn't show you the transformations, it's the other one. And we have a few different ones here, including this, this kind of neat animated, uh, the old game of life for those of you who know it, cellular automaton. Anyway, we can do a bunch of things here. Like I said, we're still working on it. Okay, next thing I wanna show you uh, we're getting near the end here as I want to show you some, I want to show you our blog on Medium, medium.com iModelJS, soon to be medium.com iTwinJS, right? This has a bunch of, uh, a bunch of stories in it, stories from the trenches, where maybe you'd call it. Um, I mentioned just a moment ago, the uh, jumpstart. This one has all the recordings I recommend if you're interested in in being a, a developer for iModelJS, you check out these these recordings. These show you each one of these shows you a different kind of lesson about how how to uh, you know how to do iModelJS. This is the one about how to do the uh, how to write those queries that I mentioned a moment ago. Okay, and next I want to show you our GitHub presence. So over on GitHub. Here we are on GitHub iModelJS. You can uh, go to our iModelJS repository, and especially, you know, this is all the source code for our, the entire iModelJS platform here. Um, everything that I showed you is built on top of this. If you want to see it, like maybe um, it can be useful for understanding how to use the APIs, you can come here and look at all the source. Uh, I especially want to call your attention to discussions which is a good place to come and ask questions. And please do, you, this is kind of our first level of, of engagement with you. Any questions, there's no, there are no dumb questions. Come here, ask them. The whole development team for iModelJS is 
monitoring this, and this is the fastest way uh, to get your answers. Okay, but again, I just want to point out that this is the open source repository. Uh, this is where development happens for iModelJS. Okay, so that's all I, I really had to show. I just want to just quickly summarize all that. Um, I showed you the iTwin JS org website. I showed you getting started and all the different tutorials that are available. I showed you some tools to create iModels, the iTwin snapshot tool and the synchronizer tool. I showed you the iModel console and the schema editor. And then I showed you some next things you can do, including looking at samples, the blog, and asking questions on the GitHub discussions. That's the end. Thanks, everybody. Next up, uh, Sheen is going to talk about the iTwin partner program. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for attending this session to learn about the iTwin Partner Program. My name is Sheena Gaines, and I am the Director of Partner Relations for the iTwin Platform. My mission is to empower our partners and developers that utilize the iTwin Platform as the preferred developer platform for infrastructure digital twins. I cannot be more excited to introduce the iTwin Partner Program, and we are seeing a tremendous amount of interest around our iTwin platform. During my presentation, I will walk you through the advantages and benefits of joining the iTwin Partner Program, what criteria we look for in potential iTwin partners, and how to apply to start the discussion today. Lastly, I will highlight the exciting opportunities around our Acceleration Fund. Our partners and developers are a critical component of our success, and we look forward to working with your organization. Digital twins are creating exciting new opportunities for digital integrators, independent software vendors, strategic partners, systems integrators, and of course, developers. The goal of the iTwin Partner Program is to foster a thriving ecosystem of organizations who share our vision of creating an open ecosystem for infrastructure digital twins. We achieve this by supporting the development of applications built on the iTwin platform and through enabling organizations that want to take their digital twin applications to market. I wanted to call out a rebranding update. You will see some changes when visiting our pages. iModel.js is now rebranded as iTwin.js and iModelJS.org has changed to iTwinJS.org. Some of the advantages of the iTwin Partner Program are that you have the ability to innovate faster, accelerate time to value, and scale seamlessly. iTwinJS.org is your one-stop shop to initiate your digital transformation, and we provide developers with a powerful starter kit so your organization can start building applications immediately. The iTwin platform allows you to easily build digital twin applications for any scenario. It provides new capabilities that drive business outcomes, and we promote openness, and anyone can visit our page. You can explore the iTwin.js library at your own pace to see what we have built and let your creativity soar. The iTwin Partner Program is set up so that organizations who are developing their digital twin technology receive the documentation and guidance needed to create an offer that is ready to go to market. Engage with our open source community filled with like-minded industry professionals where you can openly share your ideas and receive feedback. And this will help you tackle the most difficult digital twin challenges. Our dedicated team of developers work quickly to address questions that are posted to our forums. And the great thing about the community forums are that you get to interact with a variety of people and industry leading experts. It also allows you to build digital twin applications with ease. So you can start exploring with sample code and data, and you can obtain firsthand experience with our library of different iTwin projects. Learn from our digital twin experts through jumpstart workshops and on-demand videos posted to our YouTube channel. So here I'll talk about our different iTwin platform levels. We have two levels within the program. The standard level is targeted to potential partners or developers that are part of our iTwin platform ecosystem, but they might not be quite ready to build an application that is ready to go to market. These might be developers or general users who have an idea or concept, but it needs more testing and feedback from our open source community. 
the premier level is targeted to organizations that have developed an application or have an immediate need to create an application that they can take to market. So these could be digital integrators, independent software vendors, uh, systems integrators, or strategic partners. Folks that are just developing on our iTwin platform can also qualify for this level. It just really depends on what you want to achieve and your market readiness. One size does not fit all, so we welcome you to take a look at itwinjs.org and submit a partner application when you feel like you're ready. And of course, we'll be happy to have the conversation. Some iTwin partner program benefits. Our program facilitates cooperation between our partners and our itwinjs.org community to realize the full potential of your applications. We invite users to utilize the iTwin platform to see what we have built and test your ideas to build unique solutions. The benefits within our program are separated by two levels, standard and premier. iTwin.js users are automatically considered standard partners and will have access to iTwin APIs and SDKs, community-based support, the iTwin partner logo, and the iTwin developer portal. Premier partners receive all of the benefits that standard level partners receive, along with a few exclusive features, such as developer-based technical assistance, a dedicated iTwin partner manager, an iTwin partner directory logo that's posted on our website, marketing resources and support, and opportunities to participate in Bentley events. It is worth noting that Premier Partners also have priority access to workshops with our development teams, hackathons, and general development meetings. Here I just wanted to define the Partner Program benefits a little bit more. So of course with APIs and SDKs, you have access and you can use all of the developer resources on itwinjs.org. Community-based support, so you'll gain developer support through our wikis, forum, and blog resources. As I previously mentioned, the iTwin partner logo, so you can promote the iTwin partner status and relationship with Bentley. And you can use this on email signatures or your website. You'll have access to the iTwin developer portal, so you can create your applications for infrastructure digital twins. Developer-based technical assistance, and that's where you, know, you can build on the iTwin platform with help from our development team dedicated partner manager. So again, that's that point of contact to align you with the correct Bentley resources. And then you can add your company logo to the iTwin partner directory. Marketing support and resources. You can utilize, you know, the co-branded materials and, you know, work with us on promotional activities. And of course, the event participation. So you'll have those opportunities to gain exposure at sponsored events. The iTwin partner program criteria. So what we look for is executive sponsorship within your organization, a digital twin strategy, so a vision behind the iTwin supported solution, driving factors for building a solution on the iTwin platform, so that might be customer demand or market fit. The solution is complementary to the iTwin platform and it fits within targeted industries and products. And you have designated developers to advance this initiative and a clearly defined go-to-market solution roadmap. The next thing that I wanted to highlight is the Bentley Systems Acceleration Fund. It was founded in 2020 to invest in startup and early stage companies, developing products and services based on iTwin technology to advance infrastructure digital twins. The purpose is to accelerate the creation and curation of digital twins and to foster technologies and innovations by nurturing new ventures, making minority investments, and acquiring and expanding digital integrators. As you can see, there are already a great deal of companies that have aligned with the Acceleration Fund to achieve mutual success. If you think that this is a good fit for your organization, you can visit BentleyAccelerationFund.com to submit your information. The acceleration team will then review the details around how you think this initiative can help your idea come to life and they will contact you. The iTwin platform is available to everyone and we promote openness. Get started today by going to itwinjs.org to begin browsing the extensive iTwin library 
and learn how to build applications for infrastructure digital twins. After you have developed a sample application on the iTwin platform with help of the iTwinJS.org library of resources, apply to become a partner through our partner application and our team will contact you to start the conversation. We've made it easy to partner with us and align you with the right Bentley resources to make your digital twin go-to-market solution a success.